In this video, I want to talk more about the concept of size in sets, which can get very tricky. Recall that the empty set is the set containing no elements. It is just a pair of curly brackets with nothing inside. We also know that the size of the empty set is zero, since there are no elements in the empty set. Now let me ask you a question. What is the size of the set containing the empty set? Is it still zero? Let's think of it this way. Let B be the set which contains the empty set. What does the Venn diagram of B look like? If we draw a circle representing B, then what's inside is the empty set. This means that the empty set is actually an element of B. Let's take a moment to understand this. There is one element in B, and that element happens to be the empty set. So the size of B, which is the number of elements in B, is actually 1. This may seem confusing at first. It is beneficial to know that it does not matter what kind of elements is inside the set B. That means it does not matter whether the element is the empty set or not. It is the same logic as asking, what is the size of the set containing an arbitrary element x? It is just that, in this case, x is the empty set. The core of this concept lies in the fact that sets can legitimately be elements of another set. Let's consider some examples to make things clear. Suppose we have these four sets, a, b, c, and d. They look awfully similar. The only difference is the placement of the curly brackets. Let's figure out the sizes of these sets one by one. To do so, it is beneficial for us to draw the Venn diagrams to help us understand them. For A, it contains the elements 1, 2, 3 and the set 4. It should be easy to conclude that there are 4 elements in A, so the size of A is 4. Now let's look at B. It contains 1, 2, and some stuff, and that stuff is the set containing 3 and 4. So there are 3 elements in B, namely 1, 2, and the set containing 3 and 4. Note that we don't really care about the 3 and 4 inside the set, we just need to realize that it is one element of B. Long story short, the size of B is 3. Using the same argument, it should not be hard to see that the set C contains only two elements, the element 1 and the element which is the set containing 2, 3, and 4. So the size of C is 2. For D, the short answer is 1, where we note that the double curly brackets made all the difference. If there were only one pair of curly brackets, then 1, 2, 3, and 4 would all be elements of D, resulting in the size of D being 4. Here, 1, 2, 3, and 4 are just some irrelevant information inside the element of D. Now, let's find the size of this complicated looking set. The trick here is to only look for things separated by the first layer of commas. Let's change the color of this commas to emphasize. In this case, the elements of sets can be underlined as follows. Then, without actually caring what those underlined elements are, I just need to count the number of lines drawn. Since I have drawn 5 lines, the size of S is 5. Now, we introduce the concept of subsets. Suppose we have two sets, A and B. We say that A is a subset of B, if every element of A is an element of B. In terms of Venn diagrams, it is the case when the circle representing A lies entirely inside the circle representing B. There are a few notations used in subsets, so let's go through each of them. The first one is like a squished C with a horizontal line underneath. It means that A is a subset of B. Note that this notation includes the case that A equals B. It makes sense because, by definition, any set is a subset of itself. 
If we want to exclude the case in which the two sets are actually equal, we may omit the horizontal line and just write the squished C. In this case, A must contain less elements than B, and we say that A is a proper subset of B. We can draw an analogy between these two symbols and the inequalities less than or equal to and less than. Then, we have the symbol representing that A is not a subset of B. In this case, either some of the elements of A, but not all, lie in B, or A and B have no common elements at all. The last notation is perhaps the most confusing, and it means that A is not a proper subset of B. In addition to the two cases we just mentioned, it can also be the case that A is actually equal to B. Let's consider some examples. First, the set containing 2 and 3 is a subset of the set containing 1, 2 and 3, which is straightforward. The set 2 and 3 is even a proper subset of the set 1, 2 and 3, because 1 is not in the set 2 and 3. Now consider the set 2 and 4. Since 4 is not an element in the set 1, 2 and 3, the set 2, 4 is not a subset of 1, 2 and 3. Also not a subset of 1, 2 and 3 is the set 4 and 5, which in fact has no elements in 1, 2 and 3. Note that the set 1, 2 and 3 is a subset of itself, but is not a proper subset of itself. Now let me ask you a question. Is the empty set a subset of the set 1, 2 and 3? We call the definition, and we can rephrase it a little bit. For A to be a subset of B, I need to make sure that whenever I have an element in A, that element also needs to be in B. Now consider A to be the empty set. If I try to look for an element in A, I cannot find any, so I do not have to check whether it is in B. In this case, the definition of a subset holds trivially. In other words, the empty set is a subset of the set 1, 2, and 3. Let's take this one step further and ask ourselves, is the set containing the empty set a subset of the set 1, 2, and 3? This time, the empty set is an element of the set on the left-hand side, so we need to check whether the set on the right-hand side also contains the empty set as an element. The answer, of course, is no, because the only elements on the right-hand side are 1, 2, and 3. So in this case, the set containing the empty set is not a subset of the set 1, 2, and 3. Let's write down some useful facts regarding empty sets. We have shown that the empty set is a subset of the set 1, 2, and 3. And the argument works for any set, not just set 1, 2, and 3. So in fact, the empty set is a subset for any set A. The union of the empty set and any set A is just A, because there are no elements in the empty set to add to A. The intersection of the empty set and A is empty, because there are no elements in the empty set, so clearly no elements in common with A. We also have that the complement of the empty set is the universal set. Indeed, the complement of the empty set is everything in U which is not in the empty set. But there is nothing in the empty set, so everything is in its complement. Let's also write down some useful facts regarding subsets. First, A and B are always subsets of their union, and they always contain their intersection. This is clear from the definition. Since we know that any element in U must either be in A or not in A, but not both, so the union of A and its complement is the universal set, and the intersection is empty.